hello so i should be live at this point hopefully so if you are joining for the first time welcome if you are joining for more than the first time then welcome uh, you know back um so what is this well every weekend i sit down for you know two and a half three hours to work on a sudoku solver um and this is what this is it's a live coding of a sudoku solver but not just any sudoku solver very specific one the idea is that this solver should approximate how humans solve sudokus why do i want that well i want to have a solver that will help me to create interesting sudoku puzzles and for that i kind of need to approximate how humans solve sudokus because that way I can then have the solver tell me whether the puzzle is interesting or not because it actually uses the same approach as humans would. So, so far we do have a solver that can actually crack, you know, some simple sudokus. We don't have some of the more complicated solving techniques implemented yet. Um, and this week uh, we'll probably be working mostly on fixing up our coverage issues. Um, although I was looking at it, and let's just jump there right now. So last week we kind of were debugging why our coverage is not working. It seems like it's actually working now because, I mean, there is data. Now the problem, of course, is that because we fixed the coverage, we kind of broke our continuous integration, which yep so the goal for this weekend for sure is to fix this and actually have everything working again have the continuous integration working and from there apparently now the data actually gets sent in so hopefully that will make the coverage also working so that's one of my main goals and we know whenever we manage to fix this and clean, the, clean up the code because honestly it's mostly just it's not the build is not actually failing failing it's just that the project is set up in such a way that it will fail to compile if there are any warnings and right now there are warnings so the idea is to clean up the code so there are no warnings and yeah hopefully that's it um, if I manage to do that, then the next step would be to introduce a benchmark suit. Um, it's not really for performance reasons, it's more for how good are, is the solver at solving different puzzles, basically. So we do have uh, a basic uh, backtracking solver as well, but that one of course is using just like guessing to, you know, brute force the solution. Um, which is not what we want and I can always reintroduce this step into the current solver to basically solve any puzzle and solve it very fast um, but again like a proper Sudoku puzzle shouldn't need any guessing so there shouldn't be any guessing involved um, so I really want to avoid having that and what the benchmark should tell me is hey like for you know 20 out of uh, 25 puzzles, there was no guessing involved and the solver is strong enough to actually solve these puzzles. But let's say for, you know, five of them out of the five, let's say two of them needed like one guess and three of them needed, I don't know, 20 guesses or something. Um, once we have that, you know, this will give me like a better gauge on the impact of implementing different things because Let's say right now I would go and implement like a new solving technique into the solver. Well, I don't really have a good way to see what's the impact of that, right? Like, obviously I can just try with some random puzzles, but I don't have like a good way to measure the delta, like how much did the solver improve by just introducing this, like, you know, an extra step into it. Mm, so the benchmark is supposed to provide that it's supposed to give me okay yes like this change actually improved the solver by this much now you know instead of being able to solve i don't know 20 puzzles we can now solve 22 puzzles without guessing and we still have the three puzzles that require some guesses but 
you know those now require only one guess for example um so yes but this this will be a big thing because it's not just the benchmark suit itself which is you know getting a lot of data from the internet getting some puzzles getting their solutions you also need to clean up uh, the data representations uh, for sudoku puzzles so we actually need to have like a good data representation for puzzles uh, and we need to have some exporting of those stats right like if i want to see oh you know this solver used this particular technique five times and then it guessed like two times well that needs to be stored somewhere so um i need to come up with data structures to represent the, the performance stats of a solver but first things first first i definitely want to make sure that after this weekend we have all the continuous integration working and hopefully it will never break again so let's let's get into that right so last week i think we managed to clean up the square enough that there shouldn't be any warnings coming from the square.h and square.cpp anymore so this file should be at this point clean i had to kind of backtrack on a little bit of features here because previously this was actually templated it's not anymore we just are using uh, unsigned in 64 so 64 bits to represent the sudoku square again for now this is good enough we don't really need to stress about the performance for now or memory utilization or anything there is a good chance that we will revisit these kind of things later um but for now this is very much good enough okay so the next step that builds on top of the square is the block checker uh, so let's let's have a look at the warnings we are getting from the block checker um right so here we have the recursive implementation actually let's just go let's think about the interface a little bit because we like this is one of the pieces of the code that i haven't really thought about at all honestly so far um and i should really should like we should really think about these interfaces a bit more now that i'm actually cleaning up the code and figure out you know do these things make sense or do i need to like reintroduce change some of these um yeah so we initialize the block checker from a vector of pointers to squares because that's what it is it's like a block is just in this case a vector but you can kind of think of it as it's a set of squares right so like a row is just a row of squares a column is a column of squares uh, a three by three block is a three by three block of squares so that's what it is it's just pointers to squares so this makes perfect sense there isn't really anything super specific that we want to change here um one thing to kind of keep in mind here is these strictly represent blocks that i that are the size of the sudoku so for a nine by nine sudoku these will be always size nine there are some variants of sudokus that have different sized blocks um in particular uh, killer sudokus let me just pull up those uh, so you can if you have never seen those so killer sudoku yeah so killer sudokus have these special sum blocks so these still work exactly the same as any other block, right? Like, so if I have a four piece block, all of these numbers will be different. So that, that constraint still remains in place, but you also get a sum uh, for those, the squares that are present in the block. I, I'm, I'm really like still not super decided if I want to have a one class representing all blocks because I don't know how much that makes sense, to be fair. Um, 
I'm really thinking that we might. Uh, hey, uh, any reason why Square has constructors defined? Uh, let me go back to the code. Uh, so we have deleted the default constructor because like Square always needs to know what's the size of the Sudoku. Um, because again, this is many generic code, so it can represent nine by nine Sudoku, 16 by 16 Sudokus. And having a square that doesn't know what's like the upper number, upper limit, kind of doesn't make any sense. Um, and for the copy constructors and null constructors, we just have uh, default because if you look at the data, you know, there's just plain old data attributes, so there isn't really anything special to do there. And if I go back up, um, oh, wait, yes, so these two are the actual constructors. Um, so this one is the one that actually sets up the, the information inside of the square based on the maximum value. Uh, oh, so I really like to make this explicit that that's why I do that. So if, if I'm using the default ones, I just like to explicitly say, hey, like this class is actually using the default ones. And, you know, if I'm, if I don't want a particle constructor, I like to explicitly delete it. It's mostly stylistic. There isn't really, you know, anything special there. Okay. Um, and I totally forgot what I was talking about before. Right, the, the blocks. So I'm still undecided whether, whether I want to reuse one class for all the blocks because like the sum blocks, for example, are pretty different from the number blocks. So like there will be very different constraints placed up on the, on the sum blocks. So I don't know how useful it is to like reuse the code. I, I think for now, let's just have one class that will be very specifically just rows, columns and uh, you know, three by three squares, or if it's 16 by 16, then of course, four by four and five by five and so on. Um, yeah, no, except it's definitely something. So just if I like my background is mainly source codes that don't compile with exceptions. So this is one part that I'm very much ignoring just because I'm used to ignoring it. But yes, you're right. No, except should definitely be there. Um, right, uh, so the constructor I think is fine, uh, let's just do the my usual, so default constructor for this definitely doesn't make any sense. Uh, uh, right. Right now I don't have exceptions disabled, but my last two jobs, no, actually my last three jobs, which accounts for like 20 years almost, all of them had exceptions disabled. <laughs> so it is definitely thing I'm very much used into and, uh, but yes, I, yeah, it's a thing that will need to be cleaned up for sure. Um, Right, so this one is the actual constructor that constructs a block checker out of a set of, not really out of, on top of a set of squares. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, elements. Okay, so these are the pointers to squares.
Right, now... Yeah, this interface is really bad because I don't even remember what these functions do anymore. <laughs> uh, okay, check. This just checks whether there's any conflict within this block. Um, I guess that's okay, but we should just call it has conflict or something. Um, and I guess we will need to invert the logic because... Uh, yeah, we will need to invert the logic. Mm. I don't care about these. I don't care about these. Uh, right. Okay, let's do the refactor. And now I will need to go and invert these. Because previously it returned true if there was no conflict. So now I need to kind of invert all the logic. Right, uh, oops, oh, where are the other usages, come on, uh, it has conflict, then jump out, and I guess that was it, okay, let's see if I didn't break anything, okay, that looks correct, let's just to the test. So I'm not sure why it, uh, without these profiling errors. I think it's like trying to overwrite the files. Hmm. I'm going to need to investigate that at some point. Okay. Um, so yes, we check whether the block has a conflict, uh, which means that the number appears multiple times. Uh, and okay, yes, that's an important note that it also works for partially filled blocks. Uh, Return true if no conflict found and false otherwise. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, these are all kind of like semi internal methods that I just introduced because I was being lazy. Yeah, okay, I guess prune makes sense for this. So these are methods that remove that number as a possibility out of all the elements in the block. Uh, the first one just does that for all of them and the second one has, you can specify a white list of, uh, well, I guess indexes, Is it, I think it's indexes, yes, where you just ignore those. Um, yes, okay, so this is actually one of the sources of the warnings that I need to clean up. Um, okay. So, let's see. Uh, remove the number as a right. Uh, how do you spell this? Let's see. Ah, I forgot the I. Okay. Um, remove number on your right. Uh, and this one is the same. Oh. Right. 
but we have the whitelist. Uh, right. Okay, so let's let's have a look at this. Uh, first of all, this should be both unsigned because we represent uh, the indexes as unsigned as well. Can't spell today for some reason. Uh, and the same has to change here. Now, okay, I said that. We will use this class only for blocks that are the size of the Sudoku, so then I guess this is fine for now. But what I should do to be consistent and avoid the, the warnings is this. Right. Okay, we check. We check whether we need to skip over this one. Um, in this case, it's really the indexes, so, but that, I guess that's okay. Indexes we count from zero, the numbers we count from one, which yeah, I guess makes sense. Um, if we skip, we just continue. Otherwise, we just uh, yeah, remove the number as a possibility. And we also skip over the ones that are already set. Oh, this was so... If we basically set a number, then we can immediately call the prune to remove that number, but we don't want to remove it from the one space where, where it's set. Okay. Makes sense. Um, then... Solve. What does solve do again? Um, ah, okay. So now we are getting into the complicated stuff. This, this, I think will I will need to revisit in a bit. Um, let's have a look at these. So number positions. Right, so this just returns a vector of, well, in this case, actually, another set of possible positions for a number. And the same thing with a different signature, sure. Actually, why am I doing this this weird way? Like, I should be calling one from the other. Uh, yeah, because they literally do the same thing. So number and right like this. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this this is why I'm doing the cleanup because as I write the code I have a bunch of these things that just are put in place and never cleaned up. Um right, return possible. Positions for the number, right? Uh, okay. This needs to be unsigned, and this also needs to be unsigned. Right, and this thing is exactly the same. Well, not as a return. Um, insert possible positions for a number into the positions set. Uh, number into. Set. 
Alright. Uh, and again, this needs to be unsigned, and this also needs to be unsigned. Alright, so let's have a look at the implementation of these. Oh, now I. I changed the signatures, so I need to change them here as well. Since we keep using the LM size, I think I will just make a helper function for that because this is getting annoying. Um, actually, this can be public, like, why not? Okay. up uh, and then here I don't have to do the static cast I can just do size and the same was somewhere else um, That will all need fixing. Oh, oh this should be unsigned. Right. Oh, here, okay. Oh, I didn't clean up. This one, right? Uh, oh, I guess I don't have to clean up this one. Yeah, okay, but let's just be consistent. Um, right, where is this one? Oh, it's here. I will just move the code so it's actually kind of mimics the header at least a bit. Right. So now this will be just go size. Uh, this I cannot get rid of unfortunately. Uh, and these, okay, these I will do later, as I said. Right, the number of positions. So these two should move up. Right over here. Okay. Right, that looks correct to me. Let's see. Uh... No matching function. Right, because this needs to be unsigned. need to change this around oh, but let's just make it build first yes okay so it was only that cool 
Um, yeah, now for the hard part, I think. Because... Okay, let's first do the pruning intersection. That one should still be reasonably okay. Uh, right, so what this does, it will look at an intersection of two blocks. Uh, and it will basically find numbers that are only only in the intersection. Mm, but I don't remember which way it does actually work. So intersection. Okay, so we first we just figure out which blocks are part of the intersection, okay. Then Okay, so for all elements of this block, we check if they are fully contained within the intersection. Okay, so it's this way around. Okay. Um Right. Okay, I need to make some comments here because I will forget again how exactly this works. But I guess I can describe it in the header. So... Uh, numbers that are fully contained within an intersection of another block and remove those from how do I formulate this so it makes sense um, we are removing all the possibilities from the blocks that are not contained within the intersection, but we are removing that from the other block. Um, and remove those from non-intersection squares of the other block. Does that sentence make sense? Find numbers that are fully contained within an intersection with another block. And remove those numbers. Well, okay. I don't have to do that. Remove those numbers from non intersection squares of the other block, yes. Uh, hopefully, that's clear enough. I don't know. <laughs> to, to be honest, I have no idea if that's clear enough. Uh, but it sounds clear enough to me. Um, and pull, right. Yes, and this is cons because we are pruning not ourselves but the other block. Yes, okay. So, like this. Then this can move up again. Okay, so do we have... What do we need to clean in here? Okay, there's a size T here, so that needs to go. Oh god damn it, I, why can't I type today? What's happening? Um, yeah, these two also unsigned. Yeah, now I can just make it size, that's fine. I go over the elements, right, right. Yes, okay. Cool. Uh, Actually, I just go through the code and check if, if it's correct because that's always good. So, yes, first we figure out the, the intersection. Then 
we go or over all our blocks the, uh, damn it not blocks this we are a block in this case uh, we go over all the squares within this block for um, Yes, okay, so this is, this one is for our numbers. Yeah, that's one thing that's not very much not obvious on these loops usually, unfortunately. Why do I keep misspelling this? Okay, so for all numbers, we check if the number is possible within this block, ugh, within this square. And yeah, so this will be the complete cardinality of that number. So that, that goes into full card. Then we do the same thing, but just for the intersection. Right. Right. Which means that if the full cardinality of a number is the same as the cardinality of the intersection with the number, which is this thing here that means that okay this is this is a number that we want to pull out of the other block so we just put it into the result it makes sense and then we yeah okay so then we go hmm Interesting. Why do we actually do it this way? We can use the... Maybe I wrote this before we had the minus operation. I'm just thinking. Huh. Yeah. Because... So, I mean, the result is a set. But that's silly. We, I can just make it a square and then just do a minus here with the square. Um, I'll, just, I'll just keep it like this for now. I will, I will just make a note here. Um, Right. Okay, let's see if things are still working. Uh, is there... Uh, there was a number to like run all tests somewhere. Um, hmm. So like rebuild all. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's just run these tests. Oh, test failed, cool. Oh, of course because we didn't invert the logic here. <laughs> uh, right, so this is has a conflict, this is doesn't have a conflict, right. Obviously. Okay, now it should be fine. Yes. This one, yes, and this one. Yes, okay. So now, get squares yeah I don't really want to have this method here sounds sounds wrong okay solve so I think I will need to change the solve and split it up because like anyway for the for the benchmark I will want 
to be more explicit about these things. Okay, so let's have a look what the solve does right now. So, recursify number. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so actually, this should be size divided by two. Is this? Uh, are we doing hidden groups here or naked groups? I don't remember. Well, it's impressive how much I forget, like in one week. Um, Yeah, okay, I think here we are doing the hidden ones. We do no. Oh geez. <clears throat> Okay, if x possibilities only appear in x squares, then those squares can contain any other numbers, yes. So these are the uh, hidden groups, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, oops. Right, so let's make it a separate function. I mean method, vector extract method, yes. Um, and I guess I will want to do this. Hmm. here okay I'm I'm kind of thinking that I want this yeah I kind of want this to be a method as well uh, refactor extract method Right, because it might be useful to just call solve hidden groups for a particle size of a group. Um, right. And let's do... Okay, made it private. I actually don't want it to be private. These I actually want to be public. Let's just use some one liner. Yeah, okay, here we cannot use a one liner. Oops. Size E. Wow. Yeah, I should have called it. Size, yes. Right.
around the corner. So this one I want to be unsigned. Done. Unsigned by uh, sure, let's do size divided by two because we have that now. And okay, this will be inside size, right? So this needs to be unsigned, yeah, which will not work for now, I think. Because the recursive number find will not work with that. But it's okay, we can fix it. That's not a big deal. Okay, unsigned, unsigned. Um, result dot size. Well, result dot size has to be size. Right? Uh, Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Why did I make this code so complicated? Yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure this has to be size, so let's just make it size. as well and then result x dot size oh uh, no result is the the internal vector has to be size yes but this one I mean, okay, so this one actually can be size D, that's fine. That's not really any issue. Uh, yeah, we have basically a set of blocks, like list of indexes, and each of those is the size of the group we are looking for. Um, then, okay, this needs to be size again. Okay, so that should work now. Okay, this should be fine, except I need to fix the recursive number find, which is okay. Um, and recursive set find it's looking for the naked groups i think right if you pick x squares and the number of possibilities within these squares is x then these possibilities can appear anywhere else in the block yes yes so this is looking for the naked groups um okay so again the same kind of logic so this i want as a separate method. Uh, right here. Uh, yes, solve naked groups and then here right this thing I want to be another method and okay this will be unsigned and size okay Should be groups, not group. No. Uh, 
Okay. So, right. I need to make my changes again. So this is unsigned. This can be size D. That's fine. So this needs to be size. This one has to be unsigned of size, small size. Uh, right, this is the size of the block again and unsigned. Result X. So this is again a small size. Size of the group we are looking for, right? And again, the recursive set now has an issue because we are passing in unsigned. But I think otherwise this is cleaned up. Yes, okay. So let's see. Okay, this one again should just go until size divided by two. So for 9 by 9, we just want to go up to 4 um, because these are symmetric, so there's no, there's absolutely no point going higher. Uh, I can, I guess I can keep the solve function method here. Uh, well, technically member function, so that's... Anyway, um, right. These I want public as well. Right. Let me get rid of this because now I cannot put it into multiple things. Where the hell is it? Here. Okay, so solve hidden groups and block. It's right. Then I don't need the solve at all, which was my goal. Uh, right, good. So now let's fix these recursive functions. Um, so this is unsigned, unsigned. Da, 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 da. Right. Wait, there was. Oh yeah, here is the size, size, number, and size always unsigned. Okay. Then here and here here. Oh yeah, I missed this. Okay, and this. Jeez. Uh, complaints about stuff so wait generic recursive find unsigned unsigned uh, 
Okay, so I'm calling it wrong. So results, oh, it should be unsigned. Squares is that, that's fine. Size is, needs to be unsigned. And check, uh, that's okay. one more results squares size check oh there's a size D here Cool, it looks like we don't have any warnings in block checker anymore. Which is oh what the heck? Ah our tests broke because of this. Um are wrong of course uh, unsigned 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 okay let's see oh yes Um, I have plenty of these, unfortunately. Uh, okay, what are you complaining about? I think it's these which kind of makes sense I'm trying to compare unsigned vector with size t vectors hmm <laughs> Okay, good. So it's just this one. Okay, so it should be unsigned. Uh, let's show you the static cast. Yeah, it's always a bit annoying that I need to do these casts, but. Just need to be consistent, that's all. Okay, and then the same idea here. Okay. Cool. Uh, 
which one didn't we try? Okay, let's just do build rebuild. Yeah, okay, there are still some warnings. Um, yeah, so this is coming from main still, I guess. Okay. Um, so let's see what we can do. But I guess this is then cleaned up. Okay, so block checker is then cleaned up. I guess we should go and do the same thing with Sudoku.h. Um, okay, what's the time? Uh, you know what, I will get like a very short pause. Uh, but first of all, let's do just... Okay, see you in five minutes.
and I'm back. So let's have a look at my, our main class. Now let's try to clean it up a little bit. Um, So, uh, let's just write some documentations for these constructors. Yeah, let's not go further than that for now. <laughs> and type for now we support basic and dark or no. Okay. And this one was construct a puzzle with data already pre-filled. And the size is inferred. From the data, uh, how the hell do you spell this? Oh, two eyes, okay. And again, for now, we just have basic or diagonal. Constructor right. uh, Okay. Yeah, this two we cleaned up last time. Okay, so now they should be unsigned because that's what we decided to use everywhere. <clears throat> okay, one thing so this also should be unsigned. Um, Right. Um, one thing that I was thinking even last time is I was considering whether we should export the size on the rows. Hmm. I think we should. Let's just do it. It's not too complicated. Same thing here. No, no, I already moved it to the correct place. Um, mm. 
the same for the const version change and reset change but wait we don't call has changed that's that's curious but we do call reset change um yeah because we use the changed blocks right mm. yes that makes sense sure this kind of works fine um, oh, box is quite a puzzle reset right. um, how about I formulate this um, oh squares in the puzzle right I because it's a flag that we we keep and then another set of blocks just returns changed blocks yes that makes sense so let's just return it return the set of blocks that contain changed squares uh, what the heck okay Right, let's check the implementation of these. Ah, oh, yeah, we have some mismatches again. So, unsigned size, unsigned size. Let's find a change. Okay. Hmm. Yes. I need to change that. Okay. Hmm. What exactly are you complaining about? Actually, we should return size, not not this. 
Alright. And this then should be unsigned. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need to touch up the constructors at some point. But let's go back here. Yes, so. Uh, wait, what? We didn't mark it as const. How did that happen? Ah. Right, then so this is now fine. This is fine. Changed blocks, right? Again, this is exactly the same idea. Unsigned, unsigned. So, yes, I go over all the squares. And if the square has changed, then I just grab all the blocks. Okay. Um. Yeah, this doesn't... But this one, where is this one used? Hmm. Ah, yes. Mm, yeah, big, yeah, okay. This I will still need to be public. There's no way around that. I don't think. Um, but wait a second, why is this returning? Oh, because this is a reference to the vector, okay. Now I remember. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's like no more reasonable way to do this, I don't think. Right. Yes, then we have with these two special things. What the heck happened? Okay, so these are the same idea, but the row blocks and call blocks are pre-computed. am I missing? Where's the data used? That's weird. It shouldn't be used, I don't think. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I use it for the pruning. I don't think we need this anymore, honestly. Like, this was good comparison for, like, the first couple of versions, but... I kind of think, like, we are kind of past this at this point. Wait, am I deleting more of the stuff than I want? Okay. This one, recursive one, can go away. 
this one can also go away and then yeah we just have this yes uh, Yes, okay, so this should be puzzle size, puzzle size. Yeah, cool. Now now I can clean up these things nicely. Uh, I don't need the data anymore because now we have the square bracket operators. and I guess the same idea for the output Okay, those are these. Yeah, so now we don't need this. Wait, is this still being used somewhere? What the heck? I thought I just went through all the cases. I mean, these are not actually... Well, these are actually not use cases. Why? Yeah, it's definitely shouldn't be used. Uh, and this one, the same, I think. Yes. No. What? Oh, it's actually. Mm. Ah. Right. Yeah, okay, this is the one place where it gets tricky. Well, I can at least clean it up partially. Okay, the thing is I want to change this, so I don't have ints here but unsigns, but the problem with unsigned is then you kind of lose this, this scenario with minus one. Which is annoying, like heck. I guess I can... this like it's a bit awkward I mean the the kind of thing to consider is we never actually call this if we don't have empty spaces because I'm pretty sure we check if, if we have empty, like if the puzzle is filled and only then we do the find empty and if we don't that that's obviously a logic error in the code then we should fix that um, tricky stuff but yes okay yeah puzzle filled Actually, I should just move this into the pseudo tool. Yes. Okay, let's do that. Let's just 
Yeah, because why wouldn't they be part of this? It's there's really no reason. Um, Let's call it uh, first onset. Right. This actually should be in the CPP file for sure. And it also should be a const method because it doesn't mutate anything. Alright. Okay. First answer. Uh, and then. Uh, is filled will be closed again and this will be basically this piece of code right Mm, I guess I shouldn't call it is set. Uh, I mean, is felt. I should call it is set because that's that is what I'm calling the the method on the square. Um, so just rename is set. Okay. Is set. Okay, that's fine. So. Right and right. So this one returns the four hour set, and that one just returns the first unset. And then in the main, we just deleted the file empty. So this will be instead sudoku dot uh, first unset, and this will be. Sudoku dot is set. Right, so if it's set and it's solved, then return true. Yeah, okay. Uh, also, fields, right. Is set. Doing this. Oh. Okay, set right. Okay, so those were those. Uh, check puzzle. Yeah, I should call it has conflict again. Just to be consistent with everything. Refactory name. Has conflict and again I need to invert the logic and invert the logic on the call sides as well. Yep. 
if you have a conflict then you go out and if you are sad and you don't have a conflict yes uh, and is that it hmm okay I thought we are using it in more places than that right uh, so this is fine Theoretically, they should return what the heck the conflict actually is. But I don't think we are ready for that yet. Like, we. Yeah, like, I, basically, I would have to. The Hess conflict on the block would have to be much smarter about what the heck it's doing. So, basically, if it finds a conflicting number, it would have to go back and figure out where the conflicting number actually came from. I guess that's not too, too hard. Um. Like it will always be basically two conflicting squares, right? Like, I mean, technically, I would return a set because like one number can. No, but we would return the first conflict, so it always has to only conflict with one. There's no way it could conflict with multiples. Yeah. Okay, but not not now, but maybe later. Uh, no, let's let's do it. That's what to do. Uh, right. Then I think I don't need one this one anymore. Oh, I hope I don't. Um, okay, debug print. I think I will need to clean. Uh, right. Okay. That should be fine. Um, just got rid of the uses of still used uh, yeah but this one so should not be used anywhere yeah I think this thing is actually unused but let's let's recheck that um, Okay, bunch of problems. So, conversion size T. Yes, so this should be unsigned. Okay, once again. Conversion. This should be size. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Mm, cool. So I can rebuild. Okay, still a couple of issues. Um, Ah, uh, yes, okay. Yes, and this actually needs to move to the Sudoku class. Because similarly how we have block solve hidden groups, solve naked groups. Shouldn't be prone intersections actually, this should be... Refactory name, this should be solve intersection. Right. And then I then this loop actually should be solve intersections on the Sudoku puzzle, yes. Um I guess let's do that. Okay, so this thing needs to move into the Sudoku puzzle. Right, so this shouldn't be parameterized by anything, I don't think. So when we are doing intersections, we just intersect every two blocks together. And because this is asymmetric, we really need to go like every two blocks. So even the mirrors need, need to happen. Um, but it's always two blocks, so there's no parameterization at all here. Okay. Oh, but we only want to do it for changed blocks. Hmm, so maybe it cannot be in the Sudoku puzzle. Ah, yeah. Yes, it cannot be. I forgot about that. Yeah. But the swordfish. Hmm. Actually, are we doing this correctly? So. With which block do we want to trigger the intersection? No, this is correct. We want to go over the changed blocks and check them against all other blocks. Because if a block changed, there is a chance that suddenly the intersection... Yeah, so suddenly the number is only containing the intersection. So you want to prune it from the other side of, of the pruning rule. Yes. Okay. So yeah, no, this is correct. Okay, swordfish. Swordfish, swordfish. This is this is a mess. Okay. Okay, this this should definitely be a method on Sudoku. Okay, what type was this doing? Grab x number of blocks. We look at the positions of a number. If the size of the union of the positions is the same as x, then we have a swordfish. Oh, so J is the num. So the the last thing is the number that you're looking for. So I guess should should parameterize by the size and the number should be the method. Um. Yeah. Okay. So let's put. Right. 
right, something like this. Come on, why do, like sometimes it just doesn't want to cooperate. I don't know why. Uh, right, so that would be okay. So this piece of code. Actually, let me try this. So if I do refactor move. I re and I've never actually tried this. I really wonder if it can do this. Uh, sure. Oh no, it, I don't think it can make it a method at the same time. That's a little bit too much, I guess. Okay, anyway. So, result. This thing. Okay size and number um, get plots. J is number okay. Actually, need to test this at some point because I don't think I have a test for the swordfish so far. Um, I mean, to be fair, this is pretty hardcore algorithm, so uh, I need to come up with some good examples of where it actually triggers uh, to to be able to test it. Um, so, swordfish. For size, for uh, given size and uh, number, right? Um, so then here I just do super q dot sort so fish for i j, right? Um, okay. Hmm, are we warning three? It looks like it. Um, okay, well, let's let's just clean up the last couple of things. Uh, so let's just clean up all this. I, we don't need the recursive solver anymore. Okay, let's see. So let's build it, let's run it, it should run, it should work. Not this one, uh, this one. Yep. Yeah, we still cannot solve the bigger circles, but yeah. Uh, wait. Oh no, okay, so this is the hard one already, okay. Um, yeah. Well, let's let's see. I guess let's. Uh, where's my kit? Oh, 
what the heck? Let me see if they can up all these. Okay, never mind. I just connected from the command line. This is weird. Uh, right, status. Oh, let's just. Yeah. and let's check our continuous integration because for intents and purposes this should now work so we have Travis and what the heck was the second one uh, no up there right build okay so this one is building this one up there current oh okay so this is building cool well let's see let's see if this works It would be nice if we could move to more interesting things again. Because, to be fair, I'm a little bit sick of fixing the code <laughs> now. Uh, feels like work. But yeah, at least we have all the metals now cleaned up. It's no longer a mess. We are consistently using unsigned everywhere. Everything is documented. Uh, stuff is happening. Exited with. Ah, damn it. Sign unsigned. Okay, so there's still something in the tests that is tripping it over. Yeah. But I thought I. Hmm, it's just curious, like it doesn't pop up here. And it's actually okay, so this is like something Windows specific. Uh Okay, so what don't you like? It's coming from square test. Ah. Okay, the same here, the same here, the same here, I guess. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I should be doing that, yes. Uh, it's a little bit annoying, to be fair. It might not be needed to do it for like all these places, but I guess uh, square test, right? So okay, okay. So this, our our Travis is happy. It's it's just it is just up there that was complaining. Um, Okay, wait, so 
this is one error so it was the line 9 and I fixed that then block checker test 33 uh, line 33 where the heck is it uh, yeah yeah I think it's a little bit stricter on the templates for some reason Oh, this should be unsigned actually. It's actually quite curious. I would not expect that to be to be an issue. Okay. Unsigned. Uh, it's gonna be you, it's gonna be this. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Here as well. Uh, although, it should be LU. Oh, that's a horrible horrible thing. What the heck? Jeez. Okay. Data. Signed. Okay, this needs to be unsigned. Okay. Quite as this was the block check. Oh, um, still not seeing any mornings on my side, so I guess let's try again and see if a player will be happy this time. Uh, oops, not. So I didn't want to do that, but nothing happened. That's good. Okay. Uh, Let's try and make blue and make again. Just to make sure, yeah, everything looks clean. Uh, what the heck is okay? To spell it up way, I guess. Or I guess it just make windows heavy. Right. Uh, let's push. Right. See if this fixed it.
I think Travis should be still green. And I guess we should start seeing stuff on the... Oh, stuff is happening, finally. Uh, that's very good. Okay, that's a little... <laughs> it looks a little bit weird. Um... <laughs> Uh, 16% coverage. I hope that's not correct. <laughs> hey. Ah. Hey, folks. Welcome to the stream. I'm not sad, I'm just a little bit tired. And I've been struggling with... Uh... Yes, it finally passed. <laughs> okay, so for context, this has been like a struggle for three sessions now, I guess, where we kind of iteratively fixed and broke things again but now it's finally working i hope but this this hasn't finished yet so let's let's just wait before i celebrate <laughs> uh, uh. come on finish don't fail don't fail on me Yes, it works. Good. Jeez. This has been such a struggle. Okay, let's see if this thing gets nicer. No, 16% still. Holy crap. What the hell? <laughs> um. Relative change. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of weird. Maybe it just needs more data, or maybe like the warnings that I'm. Okay, so let's just switch back, right? Like if if I run a test, the problem is I keep getting this weird like. It's overwriting a file with a different timestamp. Uh, okay, let's just check what this means because it could be that we are still like generating the coverage some weird way, I guess. Um, no, that's not it. Okay, let's just listen to quotation marks. Okay, let, let's try this. I will clean up the files.
Uh, just can see stuff. Scenic cross, block checker, block checker. Right, so to get rid of this one, to get rid of this one. Ah. Oh, how the heck do you use X XRs? I always forget. No, nothing, just like this, okay. Um, what? Um, no sprint. Ah, it actually worked. What the heck? <laughs> uh, right. So now... What I can do is do the C test here. Ah, but now, now we didn't complain. Okay. So then maybe you really only have 16% of test coverage. Okay, that's that's kind of bad. <laughs> For sure. Um I mean yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay, this I need to work on this for sure. Uh but the good news is stuff actually builds and works, which is amazing and makes me so happy. Um Our badges are green, well, except for the coverage one. Jeez, 16%, wow. Uh, well, yeah, that's life. Okay, anyway. So what now? Uh, I guess I should just start working on the benchmark thing then. I guess... Well, there isn't really anything else to do, I guess, for now. I mean, I could actually fix the tests and improve them. Uh, but I think for now the benchmark would be more important. Okay, let's... The thing I could still do today, because I kind of want to go for like... 30 more minutes, maybe, maybe an hour, we'll see, but, so that basically means it needs to be something re reasonably small, I can't really start, like, something completely big. Uh, so I think the thing that would make sense to start today would actually be the stats. So... If you look at this piece of code, right, okay, let, let's just play a bit around with, with this. So, so right now how this looks basically is while not solved, uh, solve for blocks, so for intersections and uh, not blocks, so for groups, right? Um, intersection and so, so for sword finish. So there are a couple of issues with this. First of all, we kind of always do everything in every loop. Well, for one, that's not efficient, 
Um, but apart for it to, to be inefficient, like that's also not really how it, it's not really mimicking humans, right? Like what you would do is you would kind of look for one thing that impro improves the puzzle, right? And then do that and then look for the next thing. So kind of, I think what would be more like a human would be something like this. Uh, I mean, at least this is kind of how I solve Sudoku puzzles. Like as long as I have like easy stuff to do, then I do the easy stuff, then I kind of ramp up. Um, Yeah, something like this, well, basically... Uh, and actually... Mm. Yeah, so... <laughs> Basically, even like this, right? Like, because... Well, actually, no, like, these are not vowels, then. It's just... Basically, if something changed, continue, and then, yes, okay, so, so, okay, so like this, yeah, this is more what I had in mind. So, right. Continue. Yes, okay, okay, okay. So we keep trying just the basic stuff, right? The moment the basic stuff doesn't give us anything to do, we just try once to do the intersections. If they did anything, we want to go back to the basic stuff. If they didn't do anything, then we actually want to ramp up to Swordfish. And even within these, actually, we kind of want to go, oh, you know, try Swordfish of size two, then go to swordfish of size 3 and so on. And I guess like, you know, if, if, if you actually want this to be like a complete solver, well then inherently there will be a make a guess here, right? So if none of the things we tried, like none of the solving algorithms that we have avail available did anything, that is the point where we actually want to go to guessing. And this way, this solver will basically make progress every time. There's no chance that this solver wouldn't make progress at all. Yeah. Now the question is, do I want to start this today? <laughs> Let's see. Um, man, that's a hard decision. Like, this will take me a while to do. It's just moving code around, honestly, but... It's still quite a lot of moving of code. I guess without, without the make a guess, it should be pretty straightforward.
I mean, to make it even more realistic, I think what we should have is basically for every combination of a solving technique and the size, because that's kind of like most of our solving techniques kind of have the parameter which is the size, right? Well, most. We have three solving techniques if we kind of count the, these two as one. And yeah, we have the intersections, swordfish, and the blocks, the groups, I mean. So if you basically sort them by size and and type so groups of size one is obviously the easiest i think groups of size two still pretty easy but then i think i would say intersections actually come in Maybe group of size three. Hmm. Maybe swordfish of size two at that point. Really not sure about group of size four, but I guess then then we can have just the swordfishes here. Three, four, five. Well. Actually, well, sort of issues we actually want to do until until the size of the puzzle. Well, I guess it's like a very basic difficulty estimate i think this is reasonable you know like it's not super precise and as, i mean especially i'm not sure about like when i would place the swordfish size free that's kind of iffy like the, because that like for human solving that's pretty complicated already Hmm, not sure. But we should basically try the solving techniques in this order. Um, And actually what we should do, yeah, okay, so, yeah, exactly, we should basically, we should try group one, if there was a change, continue to the next iteration of the loop. Then below that, try group two, which means that group one was ineffective in this loop. And again, if check after we try to apply group size two, immediately go and you know try to do uh, try to do the next iteration because suddenly the group size one might trigger again yep yeah okay let's let's do it that way so but we still want to go over the change blocks like that doesn't change but that's still yeah uh, hidden groups but for size one Hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, okay, no, that, that's correct. I was doing that correct. Okay, so for size one, to be kind of hard coded for for a nine by nine puzzle. But I guess, like for now, that's okay. Like I don't, we don't really need to do the sixteen by sixteen, honestly, for now. Like let's come back to that once once we have good results for nine by nine. Um, because yeah, like okay. So first group size one, then. If uh, Sudoku has changed, then just continue to the next iteration of this group. Uh, and yeah, let's just continue in this manner. So we said block size 2. Sure, let's make the stats. So, blocks. Uh, why do I keep calling it blocks? It's groups, not blocks. Um, Sections and then the space for fish, right? Uh, oh, I don't have one of those map here. Okay, uh, right. And just take this as a so I guess we should do it. Do we increment the stat per block? I guess that would be more precise, but I'm not quite sure right now if which makes more sense. Uh, stats groups of size one. Okay, then same here, but group size two. Then we set after block size 2, damn it, not blocks, group size 2, um, we go to intersections, which is this one, um, I guess we want to increase it here, so for, again, for every changed block. Um, Groups. Uh, well, not groups. Block intersections. Oh wait, are we actually doing this correctly?
Hmm. The change blocks will not really work if you do it this way. Because... Because those are the change blocks from the previous iteration, but... We only get here... kind of think that when we reach here, we want to look over all the blocks again. But I'm honestly not 100% sure. Hmm. The problem is that it's kind of wrecking the performance then. Yeah, because, well, yes, I mean, in actuality, what I want to do is, I basically want to have a, like, what I'm doing with the continuous, I should, yeah, exactly, there should be, like, while something changed, so for groups, at the moment nothing changed, I don't want to bail out out of the entire solver, which was happening before. But I kind of want to do a soft reset and then solve it for intersections on top of all the blocks, but only once. And then keep looping for the something changed for the... yeah, okay. So this is the something changed. I do continue. So it goes here, I get the changed blocks. So here I actually don't want to do the return false. Uh, or do I? No, because I only do continue when I had the change, so I know for sure this will not be size zero. So is a change, I go here. So let's let's imagine that we are falling through this if, okay. So at this point, this means that we has we have just reset the change on the entire Sudoku puzzle. We tried to do this thing. Nothing happened. Uh, ah, but if nothing happened, we actually don't want to increase the stats. Oh geez, this is complicated. This is really complicated. Okay. So. Yes, okay, let's forget about the stats for now. Let's just try to make this work. So if we fall through. Here I basically want to do a soft reset, right? Like I want. Yes, yes, so this shouldn't be changed blocks, this should be Sudoku blocks. So I go over all the blocks, and if still, like if anything changed, then I want to go back to looping on the small blocks. But if nothing changed, I immediately want to go to the next thing, but there, then again, like immediate, uh, there I also want to go over all the blocks. Yeah, it's like we are basically ramping up with each step, and if nothing keeps changing, we just keep looking at the harder and harder methods. Okay.
Right. Uh, I never need to fix the stats because I don't think they make sense as I wrote them right now. Uh, so basically, I want to record. I did a thing with the particular. Yeah, so it's it's really is. If there was a change, I don't want to just continue. I want to mark that I managed to do something with group size two, and then yeah, okay. That's actually exactly what I want to do. It then then it will not be per block. But that's actually okay. Right, so here, yes. Exactly like this. I think th this is what makes sense to do. Uh, it's like I used this method and it was successful this many times on this puzzle. Yep. And we just continue in this manner. So if Sudoku, let's just, uh, let me just copy it. Okay, Sudoku is changed. Uh, then stats dot block intersections plus plus right. Uh, then what we do say we go to groups three. Right. So that's basically this copied. It's for size three. This and then sort fish of size two. Uh, so basically, want this in a loop. I still want to do it for all the numbers. And then group size four, and then all the other sort fishes just go after that. And one thing is like if if our sword fish is actually broken, this should actually allow us to see that because like if sword fish never triggers, then I think there's something wrong with our code somewhere. Uh, no, I cannot make it, I cannot put it into a loop. Uh, it still needs to be rolled out. I mean, okay, that's fine. Alright. Size 3. I'm really trying to think if swordfish is also symmetric. And I'm honestly not sure. Like, if I have a swordfish of size 3, does that mean that the rest of the... Does that mean that the rest of the squares in the same rows and columns would make a swordfish of size... well, it's not the same rows and co... I mean, yeah, that's, that's the problem. So it would be the same either rows or columns. Oh shoot, I, I'm just realizing... Am I actually doing the swordfish both ways? Okay, let's let's I, I need to check what the sword oops what this actually does because Oh yeah I do. I do get call blocks and then I do get to Roblox. Okay, so I'm I'm doing it correctly, okay. Uh... Damn it, I'm really not sure if, if it's symmetric or not. The reason why it might not be symmetric is... Again, if you take a swordfish of size 3... 
then you are looking for three and it's a cross rows you're looking for three columns right well if you invert it it doesn't have to be six columns right because the inversion is not symmetric is it or am i just being stupid at this point i don't know um i guess we can i mean why am i debating this let's just I mean, if I just unroll it, like, it will not hurt anything, right? The only thing that will happen is that once it basically runs out of options, it will just take longer to kind of notice that everything is screwed up and it cannot continue and cannot pro make progress. But I mean, I don't care about that. that that much right but it definitely doesn't make sense to do a sort of size 9 because that would be the entire puzzle uh, okay so if we end up here we just want to get out of the loop because if we tried everything and none of these methods made any progress. We just want to bail out. Yeah, okay, I, I think this is this is it. Um so so start starts starts all right. And where was the second one? The second instance of this was here, yes. So solve stats stats right. Okay. So once this finishes the stats will be filled. Now I just need to print out the stats so I can look at what actually happened. Um, okay, let's, let's make it look nice. Um, okay, let's just make a proper function for that. Um, Right, so output operator. Uh, and so stats, right. this <sighs> not blocks groups Keep calling it blocks for some reason. Um, mm, 
yeah let's let's do it just this way Stats, groups, I like this, and then yes, then. Right. And um, the same idea for swordfish, although here we go from two to eight. Oops. Uh, right, swordfish uh, starts. Uh, so Okay, I think this is it, except I want to do a little bit of indenting, so let's just do this. And let's see. Uh, oh. Chain to call it. <laughs> um, here and uh, what the heck is it here? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes, return the stream. Oh, of course. I screwed it up completely. This should be all as not sealed. Of course. Uh... Being in main is confusing me. Okay. this like that okay uh, okay Huh. Okay, these stars are very interesting. Wow. So okay, let's let's look at the basic Sudoku, right? 
So the basic Sudoku used the groups of size 1 14 times, and only one time it had to use the groups of size 2, and it didn't use anything else. Then basically this one just like built out after using... Yeah, I think our swordfish is broken. <laughs> oh. And our intersections might also be broken because they... Like, yeah, this, this gets never used. Neither here, here... Oh, there was one intersection applied here, wow, okay. So intersections might actually work. But there's like zero swordfish happening anywhere. I mean, okay, to, to be fair, to be fair, that doesn't necessarily mean that... Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is actually a swordfish to be applied. But... Hmm... Man, these stats are fascinating. Especially this one. Like, this tells you that this puzzle was, like, super easy. <laughs> mm, holy crap. Well, we do have stats. I think tomorrow I will be trying to figure out if my swordfish works or not. Uh, I will need to write some tests for that. Which will be damn hard, but I mean I have to. Because I really suspect our swordfish is broken right now. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, it's also optimal time to just finish for today. So thanks a lot for watching if you did. Um I will be streaming tomorrow at the same time, so 2 30 pm uh Central European time. Uh, if you join me for the live stream, then thanks a lot for joining. If you are watching the recording, then thanks for watching the recording, of course. Feel free to ask anything in the comment section. You know, I will be reading the comments and answering questions. Um, I also have a Discord. Uh, it's probably not linked in the comments. I will try to fix that. Uh, so feel free to hit me up on my Discord. Uh, I will try to answer questions, you know, as time permits, of course. Um, and yeah tomorrow the same time uh thanks a lot for watching again uh, have a nice day have a nice evening have a good night good morning whichever applies see you next time